Hello, hi everyone. The topic of today's lecture is major connectors and minor connectors and rests in RPDs designing. So the learning outcomes expected from you are the following. Please go through them. Now coming to the first, the major connectors. Now major connector is defined as a part of the RPD which connects the components on one side of the arch to the other side of the arch. So basically major connector is the heart of a removal partial denture. It is the major construction element and uh, forms the bulk of the RPD metal framework. So this what you see here is a major connector. It connects the components on one side of the arch to the other side of the arch like rests, uh, reciprocal arms, uh, direct retainer that is the clasp assemblies, the saddle which are also known as minor connectors and so on and so forth and the entire retainers if any uh, anterior to the fulcrum line. So the requirements of major connector as is, uh, usual it since it is a major functional element in the remote partial denture is first and foremost is rigidity. It should be very rigid that's why uh, cast partial dentures are made from chrome cobalt alloys which are one of the most hardest and rigid uh, alloys used in prosthodontics. It should provide vertical support and put, uh, protect the soft tissue that is a major connector should not sink or should not settle onto the soft tissues that is why it derives support via the rests and the uh, minor connectors to uh, stabilize itself. It should provide a means of obtaining indirect retentions wherever it is indicated such as candies class 1, class 2 and it should provide the opportunity for positioning denture bases where indicated that is it should connect lattice uh, or meshwork designs on one side of the arch to the other side of the arch to provide retentive element for the acrylic and the uh, denture teeth. It should maintain the patient comfort. It should not allow any food accumulation. It should be precise, precise fitting. There should be no gaps or sluice space underneath it that may attract food deposits. It should be self cleansing. That is it should have rounded contours and uh, high polish so that it will not attract plaque and food accumulation. Next the design considerations. In, in the instance of a maxillary major connector the border should be at least 6 mm away from the gingival margin. And in case of a mandible, it should be at least 3 mm away from the gingival margin or the gingival crevice. The borders of the, the superior border of the major connector, they should be parallel to the gingival margin. That is, they should follow the gingival zenith of the uh, teeth under which the major connectors are placed. The metal framework should cross the gingival margin at a right angle so that it covers minimum gingiva. And it should be rounded to avoid any interferences to the tongue or any discomfort to the patient. They should be symmetrical and cross the palate in a straight line. The anterior border should end in the valley of the rogi. That is in case of a maxillary major connector, the anterior body of the major connector should end in the valley between the rogues and not on the rogi or across the rogi. They should not extend over any bony prominences like tori, exostosis or the prominent uh, mylohyoid ridge etc. Now coming to the various types of maxillary major connectors first and then we'll discuss some mandibular major connectors. The most simple one is a single posterior parietal bar, a parietal strap and then we have the anterior posterior or the double parietal bar, we have a horseshoe shape major connector, we have a closed horseshoe shape which is closed from the back hence it is called as a closed design and then we have a complete parietal coverage like how the acrylic covers the palate in case of a complete partial uh, complete denture in a similar way the cast metal covers the entire palate. Now coming to the first single palatal bar which is the most simplest of the design of the major connectors as you can see it is just a simple bar which runs across the palate at a right degree uh, at a right angle to the mid palatine raphe and it lies somewhere in the posterior part of the hard palate it is in cross section it is a half oval shape. That is the underneath is completely flat and the superior surface is gently sloping on either side when it goes uh, towards the edges. So this is a single parietal uh, bar. It is not the most favorable major connector. You mainly use in uh, tooth supported retention situations like Kennedy's class 3 only. Disadvantages. It is uh, difficult to adjust. It has poor bony support because it covers a very small surface area of the soft tissues so it provides less support from the underlying bone. There is poor vertical support also because therefore more rests are required on, on, on the adjacent abutment teeth and can be used in only Kennedy's situations. Next is the palatal strap. It is single, similar to the single palatal bar but in this case since it, it is a uh, its thickness is less than the palatal bar and it is more spread out that it is like a thin sheet 
which is spread across the palate instead of a bar so it is more comfortable to the uh, tongue again it is employed only in keredis class 3 situations and uh, should have sufficient rests to provide vertical support in the thickness of this palatal strap is 8 mm and should not exceed this okay so again indications are mainly kennedy's class 3 situations uh, it's written here kennedy's class 1 but actually not preferred uh, for kennedy's class 1 situations advantages are it has great resistance and uh, great rigidity it offers more patient comfort because it has a uniform thin uh, 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 thickness and therefore it is less uh, uh, discomforting to the tongue uh, it is distributed the stress over a wider and a broader area like i said minimum thickness should be 8 mm it provides enhanced retention and good indirect retention because it has a wider coverage of the palate so the anterior portion of the single palatal strap will provide some form of indirect retention the disadvantages are large palatal coverage in cases where with uh, we, where we have a large kennedy's class 3 uh, edentulous areas the strap cannot be placed across a prominent mid palatine raphe or if the patient have tori or exostosis especially what we see in the penang population almost every third person has a tori or an exostosis so therefore this type of design is contraindicated and if not properly cleaned will cause papillary hyperplasia of the palate and the anterior body, border should be posterior to the regal like i said anterior border of any maxillary major connector should be either ending in the valley or the rugae that is in case of a uh, closed pa horseshoe design or anterior palatal strap but in case of a single palatal strap always you should make sure that they end behind the rugae in the heart palate you see over here in cases where you have large tori in the maxilla therefore this can bypass the tori on either side so that is a good excellent indication and uh, in case of class 4 also we can use a anterior posterior palatal bar but ideally in a class 4 situation a horseshoe strap is much better advantages rigidity uh, limited soft tissue coverage disadvantages are uncomfortable and limited derives limited support no posterior closed window so uh, under occlusal or heavy occlusal loading of bruxism the bar the horseshoe shaped palatal strap may flex uh, laterally so this uh, reduces its uh, rigidity when vertical forces are applied it tends to straighten so these are the disadvantages of a horseshoe shape so another design is a closed horseshoe shape design it has the only exception here is that on the posterior side there is another parallel strap which closes the design making it like a closed window design so this is better than a horseshoe shape uh, parallel strap and the center of palate is left uncovered so again you can have a tori big tori over here which is inoperable or patient does not want to get it removed the borders again should be 6 mm away from the gingival margins in case of a maxillary major connector in case of a mandibular they should be 3 mm away from the margins the displays as far posteriorly as possible not touching the soft palate that is here you have the soft palate so the posterior palatal strap is placed just anterior to the soft palate uh, therefore to prevent gagging and discomfort and food uh, lodgement and this provides more rigidity and more indirect retention than a open horseshoe shaped design so again indications are kennedy's class 1 class 2 situations and also in kennedy's class 4 situation when tori are present advantages are greater strength because of the l beam shaped effect and disadvantages are interference with the phonetics and annoyance to the tongue if it is placed too posteriorly or in a very high palatal vault case. So next up is the last maxillary major connector which is the complete palatal coverage just like an acrylic uh, palatal vault in a complete denture same way the entire palate is covered with a sheet of castable chrome cobalt alloy so it covers the entire palatal surface so based on the horseshoe shape principle this provides the maximum support and stress concentration to the underlying tissues max provides maximum rigidity the anterior border should be six mm away from the gingival margin like this in this case uh, so you place the anterior margin six mm away from the of course if you have anterior uh, parietally compromised teeth uh, in that cases, it can wrap around the cingulum of the anterior teeth to provide some amount of uh, stability and support. Or if you are using in case to replace a Kennedy's class 4 situation. So it can be constructed 
using a combination of metal and acrylic resin this is a lattice work that uh, i mean mesh work which contains the minor which is a minor character which uh, retains the acrylic base and the uh, denture teeth and you have to these are the indirect retainers placed on the canines in the form of the cingulum rest and we have a uh, what is uh, rpi system over here we have eye bars extending on either side so uh, next coming to the mandibular major characters mandibular major characters are typically four lingual bar a lingual plate a double lingual bar and a labial bar so again design considerations the borders superior border of the maxillary major character should be 3 mm away from the gingival margin they should have adequate clearance for the tongue that is provide relief for the lingual frenum so that patient's tongue is not hindered and they should be longer and narrower than the palatal connectors relief is given in all cases so this is the lingual bar you can see the margin should be at least 3 mm away from the gingival margin in some times in severely resolved ridges or patient with shallow floor of the mouth it becomes a little difficult to provide this clearance because then the bar will be too uh, uh, low and it may interfere with the lingual frenum and the movement of the tongue. So uh, minimum 8 mm of clearance should be provided from the floor of the mouth. That is the depth of the alveolar lingual sulcus 6 mm and from the top 3 mm. So uh, but it should have at least a thickness or a cross section or a height of 5 mm to provide rigidity and Advantages of this is that it is easy to fabricate. We basically get prefabricated uh, patterns, uh, wax patterns that are just stuck onto the <coughs> refractory models, and the wax up is done. So, basically, the simplest of the designs of the maxillary uh, cast partial major connector and also very widely used. Uh, it has minimum contact with the oral tissues, so less chances of uh, tissue irritations and food, the lodgement and all and more comfortable for the patient. But disadvantages are cannot be used in case of a bilateral large inoperable tori usually again seen here a lot in Penang population. Uh, and also like I mentioned if the vestibule is too shallow then we cannot use this type of uh, lingual, any type of lingual major connector in fact. So next have a lingual plate so the top portion adds like an excellent uh, cingulum rest and uh, minor connector and provides good amount of indirect addition from all the available anterior teeth so when again when the floor is shallow there is no space for a lingual bar when there is bilateral distal extensions such as Kennedy's class 1 and uh, Kennedy's uh, class 1 situations when there is excessive ridge resorption again because this will lead to a reduction of the alveolar lingual sulcus height so advantages, this is the most stable of the rigid, uh, just like a maxillary closed horseshoe shape design or a complete parietal coverage, lingual plate is uh, provides excellent retention and provides indirect retention from the anterior teeth, provides uh, additional tooth replacement. So if the patient loses the anterior teeth, say after fabrication of uh, cast partial denture, he loses some of the anterior teeth after say one year or two years, then we can add these teeth to the uh, anterior or superior portion of the lingual plate so we don't need to fabricate again a new uh, cast partial denture disadvantages are because it wraps around the cingulum and lingual surface of the lower entity it can cause decalcification secondary caries if proper oral hygiene is not maintained it can irritate the gingival uh, marginal gingiva causing uh, gingiva uh, lower lingual bar is much uh, place much lower to the superior uh, lingual bar so it can restrict the tongue movements and in case of inoperable bilateral tori we cannot use this design and uh, uh, next coming to the labial bar so this is atypical design usually we do not use this design very rarely you will encounter cast partial dentures with a labial bar so a labial bar is as the name suggests the major connect is placed on the labial side of the mandibular arch in all the instances till now we had a major connector design which was placed lingually or palatally in case of maxilla but this is a design in which with the ex exception is made and the major connector is on the label side of the ridge so this is more of a compromise rather than a preferable design uh, this bar is again it is a half pear shaped and it has vertical tags or something like eye bars extending onto the anterior lower anterior teeth to provide for uh, retention and uh, this runs along the <clears throat> uh, shape of the lower 
labial vestibule sufficient relief should be provided for the labial frenum in patient with high labial frenum attachment you cannot use this design also uh, patient with proclined lower anterity this design is cannot be used and uh, this has uh, labial bar is mainly is not actually a rigid uh, uh, what you call uh, a major connector but this is like a gate like how you swing a gate on its hinges and then close it with a lock on the other side on one side you have a hinge and it opens just like you would open a door and on the other side you have a locking mechanism in which it latches so uh, also this is known as a swing lock design this type of uh, major connector uh, and here you can see this these are the direct retainers and this is the label bar so uh, now indication where do you use this you use this only in situations where the teeth are in such as patient with severe class 2 malocclusion or uh, deep bite in which in where the lingual anterior lower anterior teeth are severely retroclined so they are so much retroclined that you cannot place a lingual bar because there is a lot of undercut uh, below the lower anterior teeth and when there are inoperable tori bilateral tori present in the mandible so in those cases only we would use place a uh, label bar so disadvantage is of course poor aesthetic because it is visible and they tend to distort the lower lip and there's a lot of patient discovered because many patient will have a hyperactive mentalis muscle in the symphysis region on the anterior border of the mandible so this will cause a lot of irritation to some patients and there will be a lot of but so next coming to the minor connectors as I mentioned minor connectors are the connecting links between major connectors and any other part of the process it may be a rest it may be a indirect retainer it may be a reciprocal arm it may be a clasp or a direct retainer it may be lattice framework so basically minor connector connect are small like small screws and washers or small nuts that connect um, different components so they transmit stresses to other components so that there is no concentration of load at any single point there are four types of minor connectors one is one that join the clasp assembly to the major connector second those that join the retainers and the auxiliary rests to the major connectors and third are those that join the denture base to the major connectors and fourth they serve as an approach arm for the vertical projection or the i bar clasp in such as in case of rp so basically this is a minor connector this is a minor connector which retains the denture base and the denture teeth so this and then this minor connector connects itself to the major connector it connects itself to the denture base and to the major connector to the rests to the reciprocal arm to the clasps so uh, what you see here is a, a, a meshwork or uh, it is yeah it's like a meshwork and next is bead and wire is uh, very rarely used and this is a lattice framework it looks like a ladder so this is a lattice framework minor connector and they are typically made with uh, prefabricated wax patterns which are stuck onto the uh, refractory cast and they have a typical thickness of 16 to 12 gauge okay so advantages are lattice framework provide the maximum amount of uh, strongest attachment to the acrylic resin base of the remote partial denture they are easiest to realign if necessary compared to a meshwork minor connector and this is a meshwork minor connector this is a lattice minor connector meshwork minor connectors are difficult to realign with the acrylic resin because uh, it is difficult for, to, for the acrylic resin to flow through the meshwork so when relining is to be considered in the future a lattice framework is more better it offers broader coverage more rigidity compared to a meshwork minor connector so the so yeah that and third is a bead and wire so basically this is a cast sheet of uh, uh, metal on top of it we sprinkle it with small plastic beads or uh, small uh, plastic uh, nails and then when they are cast they provides uh, like uh, tags for the retaining the acrylic resin onto uh, this thing uh, and then uh, these are indicated when the entire space is very limited and the acrylic resin by itself could not have sufficient strength to withstand the forces of the occlusion uh, the retention of the acrylic resin is obtained by as i mentioned small beads or projections onto the cast uh, base and these projections may be in the form of beads wires on the nails and this is the most hygienic because there is no acrylic on the underside of these uh, minor connectors so they are the most hygienic as you know polished metal cast metal pro provides uh, 
बेस्ट जिंजावल हाइजीन और जिंजावल रिस्पॉन्स एज कम्पेयर टू एक्रिलिक रेजन बिकॉज एक्रिलिक रेजन ओवर टाइम बिगिनस टू एब्सॉर्ब द ओरल फ्लूड्स में बिकम रफ एंड एट एज ब्रीडिंग ग्राउंड फॉर बैक्टीरिया एंड कैंडिडा so shortcomings are they are difficult to adjust you cannot reline them and then this uh, this form of beads and nail heads provide the weakest attachment to the um, acrylic resin and denture teeth on the top of it so very seldom used and next the last component of this lecture is the rest and the rest seed so rest seeds are not part of rpd they are part of the mouth preparation and rest are the metal portions Uh, seen over here, they are part of the clasp assembly. Actually, the reciprocal arm, the rest, and the retentive, uh, and the retentive arm, they all make uh, part. Of, they are all called as a uh, clasp assembly. And uh, uh, so, according to McCracken, a rest is any unit of a partial denture that rests on the uh, tooth surface and provides vertical support. That is, it prevents the sinking of the denture towards the tissue in or in a vertical direction. So. Any portion that of of RPD that can do that is a rest, and a rest seed is prepared in the patient's existing teeth, typically on the occlusal surface or the cingulum or the incisal surface of the anterior teeth. They are the rest seed into which the rest go and uh, seek. So classification based on the from where the rest derive its support. They may be occlusal, incisal, cingulum rest. And according to Stewart, they may be primary rest or secondary or auxiliary rest. Secondary auxiliary rests are basically the indirect retainers. Primary rests are part of the clasp assembly or direct retainer assembly. So now, uh, what is the uh, purpose of a rest? The primary purpose of a rest is to provide, as I mentioned, vertical support to prevent the denture from settling vertically when the occlusal forces are applied. Then second thing is they direct and distribute the occlusal forces along the long axis of the abutment teeth so that they are not damaged in the long run. They provide rigidity because when if you have a good support, the processes will be rigid. Second, they maintain the established occlusal relationship by providing vertical support and preventing settling of the denture. Unlike in case of a complete denture, when forces are applied, the dentures will tend to settle towards the soft tissues. they prevent the supra eruption of the abutment teeth and the antagonistic they restore the occlusion they prevent impingement of the soft tissue okay so uh, transmission of the lateral forces can be increased by deepening the rest seeds the rest seed should be shallow and saucer shape or spoon shape for distal extension partial denture they should not lock the rest into it otherwise they will cause talking forces on the abutment teeth and lead to bone loss and uh, trauma of occlusion uh, trauma from occlusion to the abutment teeth The, there are three forms of occlusal rest: uh, occlusal rest, cingulum rest, and incisal rest. So this is occlusal rest. Occlusals are typically placed on molars and premolars, uh, and uh, this is how a rest seat should be. It should be spoon shaped or saucer shaped, and the floor of the rest should be to uh, directed towards the center of center or the long axis of the abutment tooth, and it should be at an acute angle. The, the in order to prevent the slippage or the slippage of the uh, cast partial denture from the teeth so the angle should not be obtuse it should be acute angle like this and it should have a smooth uh, underbelly or uh, like a saucer or a spoon so typically these are this design consideration is very important in a kennedy's class one and class two situations it should have uh the base uh, or the triangle of the rest seat should be at least 2.5 mm or 1/3 of the uh, width of the teeth so in case of a molar teeth it's the rest seat would be either 2.5 mm in uh, width the base of the rest seat or the rest and or at least should be 1/3 of the circumference or the width of the abutment tooth the marginal ridge should be lowered by at least 1.5 mm to wide bulk of the middle so this the thickness should in the marginal ridge area should be at least 1.5 mm to prevent breakage in the future because this is this is a if this is not done very frequently the rest will break and the entire cpd is can should be thrown in the dust and so okay so the angle is obtuse that is less than 90 degree uh, angle is acute less than 90 degree and should not be uh, obtuse and typically they are prepared with a round burr and the edges of the rest seats are flayed with a uh, finishing so next up is a cingulum rest cingulum rest are <clears throat> typically placed on the cingulum of the canines they are uh, inverted v shape like you use it looks like a v shape when you seen from the uh lingual aspect they should have at least 1 mm deep on the cingulum they are placed in the cingulum because this is the most 
dense and the most thick for enamel found on the canine they should be placed in the sound tooth structure and or in entirely within the restorations they should be not on amalgam restorations and this is how a, a lingual rest looks like you can play a, make a single rest or a partial single rest like in this case in case of a canine this uh, this type of design you will use only when you are using a rpi system and the canine is the last abutment so teeth on that side they can be easily incorporated in crowns like if a, if a patient has a pre existing crown or a crown also needs to be fabricated along with rpd we this rest seat design can be incorporated in the um, pfm crowns uh, and this uh, seat should be entirely in metal should not be covered by ceramic so next coming is the incisor rest incisor rest are placed on the incisors or the anterior teeth and uh, it is uh, inferior mechanically and aesthetically compared to the occlusal rest and the cingulum rest they are placed on the mesio incisor or the disto incisor line angle they are not placed on the center of the incisor uh, edge they are placed more towards the mesio incisor line angle or disto incisor line angle they should again have a width of 2.5 mm and a height of 1.5 mm so they are unesthetic they are uh, not preferable may cause uh, sensitivity and that brings us to the end of this lecture thank you